Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. So today we are going to do the MS20 filter. When we talk about filters, everyone talks about the MS20 filter. But as the title says, we're going to do one of two MS20 filters. Cause did you know that there are two different kinds of filters in the MS20, depending on how old the MS20 is. So today we're going to make the first MS20 filter, or also uh, known as the Korg 35 filter. Uh, this is because the early models of the MS-20 had a filter that was built around a mystical chip called, called Korg 35. So the schematics I'm going to follow today is one that I got sent to me in 2007, along with components and a uh, board that was handmade at home by one of the Swedish analog sympathizers. Uh, so it is... Uh, made by hand and drilled by hand everything and there was a lot of strange errors on this i bought two so uh, here's that one and some of the components had to be uh, put on the other side because of uh, mirroring when doing the design but we're not going to do that we're going to do as usual and just build it on a vero board so while researching this video, I realized that the circuit I'm going to build is a Jürgen Heibel 720 VCF. So uh, Jürgen Heibel uh, did uh, do a, a reverse engineering of the Korg 35 VCF and built a filter around that. And even though my schematics that I have from 2007 doesn't have uh, his initials or anything like that, while looking at the Jürgen Heibel schematics, it is very much the same. So that is why that is where the credit is due. Also, if you wonder about the differences between the old and new versions of the MS-20 filter, uh, a guy called Stim Stinchcomb has a site where he goes through the MS-10 and MS-20 filters in real detail. So before we go into the schematics and how to build this, I want to do a shout out to my patrons on, and supporters on Patreon who uh, help me make these videos by supporting me. Uh, and with that said, let's go into the schematics. This was a Swedish analog sympathizers project that uh, was done in 2007. And when I so I got the schematic sent to me in an email uh, from Gunnar Loeb, which mm, he might have been the one who drew this schematics. And this is the schematics we are going to build today. And if we look at so, as I said, this one looks very similar to the Jurgen Heibel drawing from '99 of the Korg 35 uh, clone. And I'm guessing if it's not the exact same, I'm guessing it's very similar to this one. It was Jürgen Heibel who deciphered the Korg 35 uh, IC, as far as I know. But this one is the one we're going to make today. I also added the manual for putting this together. However, that was in Swedish. Uh, and I'll go through some of the things to think about when building this. I guess the biggest thing is that you can have an HP or high pass input as well. So uh, as it stands, it's a low pass filter, but you can add a HP input which to make it a high pass filter. And this can be done with a few components and uh, either a jack or a switch. You can't have high pass and low pass at the same time. You need to choose. In my uh, panel design, I chose to have two jacks, but you could fix this with a switch as well. I choose to put this in the intermediate category of difficulty to build because it has around 40 components, just a bit less. 
and but there's nothing special and it's quite straightforward it cost around nine dollars to build so the most expensive filter so far but still not that expensive the only two different parts is the 2SA970 and the 2SC2240 PNP and NPN uh, and this is because I got these in the in the component bundle that I got with the kit and I'm unsure if the BC540 and 550 series would work as a replacement for these two. I had these two so I used them. As for the panel design I did have quite a bit of problem to get all these knobs and jacks in one row so I had to make it 7 HP to accommodate for all the so there's three pots and five jacks in this one and you can you don't have to have you don't ha have to have dual CV inputs if you want both high pass and low pass you do need three jacks so this is one way you can do it uh, go together a bunch of people either make your own PCB or order a PCB order lots of components and get someone to coordinate and and um, make these little component collections that you can use for the your build um, and then along with that always comes if you build a or if you make a PCB there always comes these things that oh right I forgot to make that and there's a few corrections and stuff like that lots of text uh, but when people do this together it's good that so uh, here's an update that you can get more re resonance if you change some things so I'm going to on the schematics which I have Okay, let's take this one so on the schematics I'll just mark these things so I can uh, maybe change that according to this If you want to add a high pass input, you have the low pass input here, and the high pass input should be connected here. So here you connect a 2K2, just like over here, uh, and this is the high pass input. You can only have this or this, so you can't have them both connected, that will not work or be good. This would probably be better done with a switch, then you wouldn't need, then you could just have the 2K2 HP input and you would only have one jack and one resistor and then adding the switch between there and there and the out uh, and the input jack i want to stress that some of the high pass sounds are wrong in the sound examples later on because uh, the jack i had i did a wrong connection so i actually connected it to both these uh, connections and the high pass filter is in reality more aggressive than it sounds in these uh, sound examples. It took me around two and a half hours to breadboard this.
Let's begin with a filter sweep in a low pass, no resonance. And with resonance. High pass. With resonance. Let's continue with the sequence. And let's add some envelopes to that. some uh, LFO filtering
right here's just a short example of the high pass filter only not connected with the low pass and high pass there was a wrong connection and i just want to show how the high pass filter sounds on its own because it's a bit more resonant that way so let's begin without resonance and do a filter sweep And with resonance maxed out. This, uh, you didn't hear this before when connected the, the, in both high pass and low pass at the same time. Let's also show a filter sweep. which is not as obvious uh, in the high pass as in the low pass. Sorry about that mistake and hope this shows better how the high pass sounds like. And with that we have our third filter done. I don't know about you, but I think this filter is a bit more smooth than the uh, the MS20 filters built with the OTA that I've seen uh, online and other YouTube videos. Uh, that is the one we are going to make the next episode, uh, so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison after that. Uh, but other than that, it's a nice filter. Um, yeah. And you, now we have both high pass and low pass. So with that, we have a, a one filter that is high pass as well. All the other filters have been somewhat low pass. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, one is kind of a low pass without uh, resonance and the that's the Paya 2720 and the uh, Tim Escobedo Q and D VCF is a is a fake low pass. That's what he calls it. Um, so yeah, this is a real low pass and a real high pass filter. And with that said, I hope I see you in the next episode and that you like and subscribe and any thoughts and comments you might have leave them in be below in the comment section and i'll see you in the next episode take care bye